Hey guys, welcome back. Let's uh, pick up where we left off here on that little uh, prototype signal tracer build. And um, again, I elected to uh, just play around with some different uh, mounting solutions or form factors and uh, decided for this particular prototype to use this uh, 40 dram uh, vial. There's uh, definitely a better material that could be used, but um, it served me well as far as a small 40 millimeter speaker to be mounted right here inside the uh, push cap and uh, we'll get that mounted here in just a bit and uh, just drill a few holes here in the uh, vial uh, probably a permanent solution uh, for EMI etc would be a nice uh, metal enclosure but uh, just for the fun of it and for my edification and that's what this whole build was about um, this really served me well so we'll start out here. I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple holes here in these grommets, and I'll go over the uh, sizes, etc., along the so way. I've got my uh, this small screwdriver out. I'm going to create two pilot holes, one right here in the center and another one right in this area. And uh, you can see it's not out here on the edge itself. This one will be for the LED, the other for the probe, 1964th uh, inch uh, drill bit, and then we'll get these 5 sixteenths uh, grommets in place. The material is so soft, just a hand drill works just perfect. Alright, let me clean these edges. Let me see, I got my little uh, mini torch here. I want to just uh, wave it over the top of those areas and it uh, just kind of knocks off those uh, edges right there for me. Cleans them up. There we have it. I'm going to get those uh, grommets placed in there now. It's really cold out here in the shop today, so I just took a moment here to uh, heat up the uh, grommets just a bit. Uh, just so they'd be just a little more flexible. And uh, you can see there, they're going right in. So that's the first one there for the uh, LED. Let me uh, repeat that process here for the uh, center probe position as well. Okay, simple and uh, straightforward. and. You can see, I think maybe from that angle there, what I'm talking about with the uh, grommet itself here for the LED. And uh, I may have pushed that a little too close there, but uh, either way, it should uh, still work out okay. You can see here, I'm just doing a uh, dry fit, and I'll go ahead and get the uh, LED here inside the uh, grommet. I've got some LED holders as well, but I uh, just found the grommet for you know the prototype bill worked just as well and it was uh, a little simpler here to get inserted and um, I'm not sure if I showed it or not on my first build or maybe second or third build I had the LED on the top and uh, it works much better and it's a lot cleaner here if it's on the underneath side because again we've just got that battery that lays in this area which kind of bumps up against the uh, back side of the LED um, here and uh, that works out good. I think that gives you an indication here now that uh, LED itself is pointing you know back in this uh, general vicinity here now which um, gives you some uh, nice light there around the center part of the probe. Uh, again some of my first designs was more just straight out as such which is still uh, useful. Anyway, let me uh, get my uh, standoffs here um, screwed on to the back of the uh, circuit board here as well in uh, just a moment. But before I do that, let me just go ahead and uh, mark up the uh, location here for the uh, gain slash uh, volume control. And then we'll go ahead and mark here the uh, sides as well where I'll drill the hole for the uh, gain switch here and the on and off switch on this side. Okay, I'm going to just do a visual alignment here, just making sure my uh, LED, my probe, and my switch will reside here. And I just want it uh, somewhat centered. Um, I'll go ahead and do that, and then um, we'll drill another uh, hole here. It happens to be the uh, same size, I think a 1964th inch. I'll double check that in my notes. And if that's inaccurate, I'll let you guys know. And then from the uh, for this particular container, and I'm, I've got a few different ones, they're all just a little bit different, but for this particular vial, 
if I start at this edge and come back toward the uh, circuit board, somewhere between 17 and 18 millimeters from this point back in is the uh, ideal location to uh, mount the uh, dual 10K uh, potentiometer here. And the reason that's important, it allows uh, clearance from the uh, back of the speaker, uh, which is mounted again in the uh, cap itself. And it also gives me clearance here back to the uh, capacitors here in the LM386 and the uh, terminal blocks here for the battery and the speaker as well. Let me go ahead and get this marked and then I'll go ahead and take time over here once I get the alignment the way I want it just to put a small mark here as well using my uh, Sharpie. Where I want a hole here to protrude through for the gain control in addition to the on off switch here. Again, uh, real simple here, just starting uh, some pilot holes here just for a simple uh, three holes to be drilled there. See there how just a little uh, heat there cleans those uh, edges up really nice. Not that it really matters that much for a uh, prototype build, but it uh, does look a little sharper. Okay, if you're looking uh, down inside the uh, vial there, you can see that I've got the uh, male to female spacers uh, put on. And uh, this is what I used, and again, that was in the bill of materials. They're uh, M2, 12 millimeter, and uh, I think I first maybe noted uh, 10 millimeter, but the uh, 12 millimeter puts just a little bit of pressure on the uh, side of the vial and uh, holds it more secure. And I had actually placed some in some of my first builds up here on the uh, front as well, but with the probe uh, soldered on. Uh, the way it is, I uh, elected not to do so. Again, just being a uh, prototype, you're putting this in a different enclosure. Uh, you could use uh, brass or other type of uh, standoffs as well. Anyway, my alignment seems to be uh, fairly close here and spot on for my uh, gain control here to be able to get access to the uh, switch as such and uh, the same thing here for the on and off on this side okay let me pull this back out i'm going to go ahead and get a couple conductors here uh, tinned up and twisted together for my uh, speaker connection here and get those attached just make sure they're long enough here to come out the back and then we'll actually go ahead and place the board in get the uh, volume gain control here potentiometer uh, mounted permanently um, LED placed as well. And I've got a piece of uh, silicone to act as an insulator and I'll place it here on the bottom of the circuit board so that will lie between the uh, battery and the uh, back side of the prototype circuit board just to make sure we don't get any uh, shorts or any other issues. And um, up next we'll get started here with the uh, speaker. One step I deferred here just a bit is the uh, ground connection and that's just the uh, ground cable with the alligator clip and I uh, just made certain that my alignment is uh, the way I want it here for the gain control, the on off and the volume and uh, you can see I've got this mark so I'll drill another hole here in my uh, 22 or 24 gauge wire that's got an alligator clip that serves as the ground itself will be uh, soldered across these points here that you see closest to the probe on top of the board and then loop underneath and that's tied back to this probe uh, here on the outside where that uh, germanium uh, 1N34 alpha diode resides. Now one of my other builds I elected not to do the uh, ground connection here and just leverage this outside connection but putting an alligator clip here 
with the uh, LED light and just kind of working in this area with that cable dangling out even though I'm only gaining about a half an inch or so from here. Um, just wasn't quite as clean um, just working with the unit but uh, it's just a matter of preference. I could easily just leave that off and just use this as my uh, ground location as well. Uh, that's really your call or what you feel comfortable in doing. I'll go ahead and uh, just create a small uh, pilot here again using this uh, old screwdriver then uh, drill one more hole here clean it up just like I did the others and get a, a lead here soldered on when that time comes. One thing I didn't mention when I was uh, drilling this out even though the plastic is so uh, soft I elected to use like a donor board it's just a uh, backing material here uh, just in case the drill bit goes all the way through. Just a couple of uh, conductors here that I'll use for my uh, speaker leads. Yellow, I'll make ground, and uh, red will be the uh, positive side. Uh, 28 AWG is what I'm using uh, throughout the whole build. Now I'll just get those uh, twisted together here. You can see here I've got everything uh, tied in there to the uh, terminal block and my uh, lead lengths here. I think we'll be just fine. Let's go ahead and get this uh, cap here prepped for the uh, little uh, 2 watt 40 millimeter speaker. I'll just be cutting a little small section here. And the uh, purpose of using the uh, foam is to create some separation between the uh, plastic plate here in the back and the speaker surround area itself around that uh, gasket. So um, let me go ahead and uh, get this cut here, just a small square. Grab the speaker that we'll use. I'll place it down on the foam and then uh, just get a sharp razor here. I'll cut around that and show you guys how I've done the other uh, few prototype builds to this point. You can see I've got the uh, foam cut here and the purpose of the foam again will to be act as a spacer between the speaker itself and the uh, plastic. And uh, what I'll do, as I mentioned, I'm not going to trace this out. I'm actually going to just push down on this in just a moment. And then uh, it will create a nice uh, trace mark for me, and I'll just cut around it. It won't be uh, precise. And uh, I'll come out about a quarter of an inch uh, past the edge of the speaker as well. And uh, that area will be uh, glued back down to the uh, plastic uh, inside piece here uh, cap on the vial and the other side of course will be attached right to the uh, the gasket area right here on this speaker that I'll lay a bead of glue down on. I probably had my hands in front of the camera during part of this time but again you can see I'm going to just flip the uh, speaker over center it here and I'm going to just apply some uh, pressure I think when I lift that up, you'll see what I've got there. So uh, I'll just go ahead and cut this off right here, off camera. I'll start out on the inside area. And then again, I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch here around the outside. You can see here, I'm just finishing up the cut. And again, it's a little rough, but it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. You're not going to see it. And uh, you could take a circle cutter or other methods and procedures and uh, make that a lot uh, neater, I'm certain. Well, let me go back to the speaker here because I'm going to use the uh, speaker here and uh, just trace around it and uh, create my uh, area that I'll be doing the uh, drill outs there for the uh, speaker holes itself. Let's get that done and then we'll come back to this piece. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to just center the speaker here visually, and then I'm going to just take a pencil and go around the edge of the speaker uh, three or four times. Uh, just something I can see to use as a indicator for uh, drilling those uh, holes out that I indicated. In addition, you can see that gap uh, that I talked about here. So if I throw the uh, piece of uh, material in that I'll use, you can see it doesn't come all the way up to the edge and uh, that's uh, there's a reason for that. I think some of my first builds I had some of the foam go all the way up but when you're trying to snap on the cap you don't get a good uh, connection. Um, 
So anyway, I think this will uh, work well. That, you can see I've uh, taken time here to just take my pencil mark and go draw around that area. Um, yeah, it's not my favorite part, but uh, you know it has to be done. Let me just uh, go ahead and drill those holes, and you know I could make this a lot neater. Uh, being a prototype, I've just uh, used my hand drill and uh, just freehand. I'll start here on the uh, outside ring and uh, just work my way around. Fill that gap in, come in, do the same thing, go to the next, tie this in, and then uh, finish off the uh, center locations. For uh, reference, too, I used a uh, 5 32nd inch uh, drill bit for the speaker holes. You can play around with that. Uh, it may be too big, too small for your liking, um, but that's what I elected to use, 5 32nds of an inch. Okay, just a quick update on my progress again, just uh, freehand. And you can see how I started on the outside. Now I'll just move in here and uh, repeat the uh, process. Okay, guys, not a bad job there just doing that uh, kind of free form, free hand uh, drilling. So um, that works uh, well enough. Let me go ahead and get some grill cloth out. And the reason why I'm using uh, grill cloth, some of my first prototypes I put together, no grill cloth. And uh, it's easy to pick up uh, a piece of metal and uh, drive it back toward the uh, speaker. I think you guys just saw what happened there. Hopefully that didn't damage the speaker. But there's a, a magnet in here. And uh, all you're doing is pulling uh, junk and debris uh, back in here. And after this is uh, glued down, uh, you can still get it out by placing another metal object in there. And uh, But it's uh, kind of a pain. So uh, just a little... Uh, grill cloth to uh, finish this off and uh, hopefully help keep some of the uh, debris away from the uh, speaker uh, magnet there. I'm going to just trace around the uh, speaker here with a uh, pencil just to get a uh, rough cut location. And I'll be doing the same. I'm going to just go around this and add about uh, a quarter of an inch or so to the outside uh, edge here of the speaker. Then we'll do a dry fit here and uh, just make sure that we're good to go. Okay, let me give this a uh, fit now and see what we've got. That's uh, fairly close. I may trim just a bit more there. You guys can see here I've got a, a template out of some uh, cardboard and uh, the purpose for this I'm going to spray some uh, spray adhesive all right I've got a good coat of adhesive there in place let me uh, just lay this down in here move this uh, backer here out of the way and I'll just work this around here see if I can get it to uh, lay down in there again this doesn't have to be uh, you know a perfect job I just want it to uh, adhere well and I think I got a nice uh, thick heavy coat probably a little heavier than I actually needed all right I think that looks uh, good you can see it there then if we uh, get that magnet to pull there pulls any debris in uh, to keep it out of the uh, speaker area itself what I've been using guys is this contact cement here it uh, works really well it's got a long work time also and uh, I'm gonna just apply just a bit on a uh, q-tip and uh, just go around the edge right here and then just place this on by eye try to center it best I can and then uh, we'll flip it over and uh, get that to adhere over on the uh, speaker grill cloth and then uh, we'll be done all I'm doing is just laying a small bead down here as such okay you can see there I've got it around the uh, area and I'll take that piece there that I cut and uh, just place it down on there as such and uh, there you have it I'll get it up here closer to my uh, eyeballs and uh, just center it 
best I can and all I'm looking for is this to be a spacer between the uh, grill cloth itself now and the speaker frame itself just cuts down on all the uh, vibration noise and uh, sound quality is uh, a lot better I've noticed versus my uh, first build which I elected to attach the speaker directly to the plastic cap which was a mistake you can see here I'm just applying the adhesive down on this side of the foam now as I mentioned I would it doesn't have to be perfect again I'm going to just lay it down in there as such and I'll have just a minute or so to uh, position that and uh, that's pretty close right there so um, I'm going to just uh, move it around just a little bit and uh, that's close enough there and then we'll solder this up here in just a moment now I'm going to just take my uh, q-tip with no adhesive and just go around the uh, speaker area and uh, just make sure I've got everything down in there nice and uh, neat and firm Okay, you'll notice I've got my uh, ground lead here protruding through the uh, vial. I think the first one I uh, soldered on, I forgot to do that. Pretty stupid, right? So um, let me uh, strip this back here, and uh, we'll get that attached here to this front piece as such, and then tie it in underneath here, right there which ties in to this outer conductor of the uh, probe. Let me uh, just lay down some solder right here. And I think I've got a small tie wrap we can use here for a strain relief, which I did not have or use on some of my first uh, prototype builds. Okay, guys, hopefully this is showing up uh, here well, and you guys can see that. You can see i got the probe tied into the uh, ground side of the circuit here and uh, my ground lead itself. I've got my strain relief in place and of course this is tacked in along the way and runs over so uh, we should be uh, good to go here. Let's, let's get this thing back inside the uh, 40 dram uh, vial that we're using as a form factor here. You know I've done a couple this way. I'm not going to put the heat shrink on yet. I'm actually going to put it inside the enclosure then put the heat shrink on from this side. Uh, since I'm going through the uh, rubber grommet. Uh, it's really no right or wrong, and this is grounded anyway. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing up in here. Okay. Now let me align this. Guys, here it gives you an indication how tight this is, but the uh, vial is flexible enough. You can see where I can just mash that in just a bit and then bring the uh, volume and gain control right up. Let me get my uh, flat washer and uh, my nut here and uh, go ahead and get this tightened down. And I got that ground squared away there, so we're good there and everything's in alignment here for my uh, gain control and my power as well. We'll get the uh, LED placed and then I'll uh, cut that small piece here, that runner, for the uh, underneath side of the uh, circuit board. We'll get it in also. Slip a uh, battery in and uh, give this thing a uh, test drive here on the uh, radio over right here behind me. Okay, I'm out of my uh, best batteries, the uh, high milliamp batteries, but this one will uh, serve me okay for testing purposes here. Um, you can see I've got that silicone sheet in place and the uh, battery itself will uh, go in as such here. Hey guys, here's a look at the uh, signal tracer uh, put together, and uh, my apologies, my memory card uh, filled up, but you didn't really miss much. I was slipping in that piece of silicone underneath the battery, and uh, you can see I've got the speaker in place, and you can see how it comes loose, and a uh, very simple design there. You saw the uh, grill cloth installation, the foam um, there, and the, there's the battery placement with the standoffs with the uh, volume 
control and gain control. Dual 10K there mounted. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's not really much to the assembly itself there in the uh, little uh, 40 dram vial. Um, you guys will see that I did add a, a piece of Velcro here to secure the uh, ground strap. And in addition to that, you'll see a key to the house here. And uh, that's nothing more than a piece of paper clip. And uh, that allows me to get in here if I don't have a small screwdriver and uh, turn the unit on, as you can see here. And take care of the gain control here as needed. Let's do a little quick uh, testing here just to make sure the unit's still working. And uh, real quick as well, uh, one of my great subscribers uh, follows my channel, Josh. We were corresponding this morning and he was asking about ergonomically about moving the uh, switches to the outside and I think that can be done very easy in a new form factor. And uh, maybe even a metal one to uh, reduce uh, EMI issues and I uh, was asking about the volume control as well. I think in the prior video you guys saw me operating this with two hands, but you can easily operate this with one hand and adjust the volume. I'll Everybody's demonstrate that here. Uh, you can see I'm holding it here, and I can adjust the uh, volume control as I go with my finger. That's the high side of the uh, volume control itself. This is an RF position here. and head on into an empty CSX train. So uh, the unit's really performing well. You guys will see another video um, from me where I compare the uh, results of this unit against my Heath Kit IT-12. I hope you'll watch it as well. And uh, have fun building this little unit. It's uh, been a lot of fun for me. And again, I did this for edification uh, purposes. Uh, learned a lot. And uh, that's what it's about. And uh, this is my way of giving back uh, to the hobby. So I hope you guys uh, have fun with it. Enhance it. Please share your uh, ideas how to make it uh, better. I uh, would love to see some future videos on the design and any enhancements to improve the, uh, the usefulness of the device. Um, anyway, the uh, schematic follows here as well. There was a uh, request for the full-blown schematic. The layout uh, included the schematic and uh, points of contact, but here's a true schematic at the end of the video. Have fun, folks. Take care.